Hey, Road Trippers, the hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the Sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast, and Rich Channing have made their Sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the Sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the Sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the Sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats and you could win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the Sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. One more. Are you cutting off my family photo of my No, no, not at all. (laughs) Mine is more important. There. Put family photo, put nephew on the top shelf. No, that's great. Alex, we'll great. adjust this. We're also we're, yeah, Chan. I was gonna tell you what, what I think. Look, this is my vision for you. My vision board for Channing is like kind of like this behind you with all of your different varietals. I learned that word from you. All okay. of your different wines just framing your narrow head. That would be awesome. If yeah. I have that, once I get that many different types of wine or that many bottles and vintages, I definitely will. And I'm also in a makeshift shoe room. Where now I play video games up here and do emails. And what's crazy is I'm on the board now at OHSU, like Oregon. How uh, old are you? Science museums and shit I'm like on the that. Board. Or, sorry, not OHSU. That's so stupid. At OMSI. What's so, what is that? What is that? I, well, Channing, science you're doing museum. What I don't what is that? What have you never been to the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, dog? You're Have on you ever the board, over Oregon, and seeing the submarine, the bridge. Yeah, honestly, it, it's wow. tough. Like you know, it's tough. I didn't. I missed that one, big guy. Anyways, when you're on a board, you got to read 34 pages about what's good for the city, buildings, what's good for the kids, what type of new thing. It's a lot. I'm were you the were you were you the diversity edition? Oh, oh, for sure. <laughs> Welcome to this edition of Road Trip and the Board of Science with me again, Channing Fry. There you go. <laughs> God. See, I got the, Richard Jefferson I got the Alex smart glasses on today. He's got his Malcolm X glasses on. He wants yeah, when I have these on, it's, I'm talking serious to you. Oh, let's talk about something serious, by the way. What? Speaking of money and board and making decisions, um, how about the Mark Cuban Mavs um casino billionaire Miriam Adelson, the fifth richest woman in the world? What is he running for president? Oh, I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I think our options with Biden are slim. Um, but no, no, this is great. Don't, Mark Cuban won the best professional sports teams owners. Period. Not just NBA. Uh, you know, you would put him up there, in my opinion, all time from a marketing standpoint and from a growth and understanding people and business and connecting like he's he's in in my opinion he's the one of the top five right Mm -hmm. uh bus number one what bus Bus. gary bus would be number one obviously you know and if you think about when mark cuban took over um he was the new i don't want to he i don't want to say he was the new jerry bus by any disrespectful means but he did definitely then he was a Jerry Bush was the first, like, oh, this is the players' league. I want to, you know, make sure that the players are happy. Mark Cuban was the same thing. He, like, Dallas Mavericks had, they really didn't have much of a history, right? They were just okay. There were this. He showed up and just made, and especially in the Dallas Cowboys town, right? In Dallas Cowboys town, he made being a Mavericks fan cool and and made the team dope and got people into the arena and built a new arena. It was, he did a lot of good things in his, in his amount of 20 plus years there. Uh, the owner of the Miami Heat has done a ridiculously mm-hmm. good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously San Antonio. Stop. Well, we, yeah, it, it's like they're they're a great organizations. But what I say is this: is like who's the owner of the San Antonio Spurs? Like I I know these owners, but I'm saying Mark Cuban has right. elevated the game of basketball. 
he is one of the most, even if you didn't like how he used to hate the refs and how he used to do oh, it, yeah. you still knew Mark Cuban as a dude that loved basketball, that was an owner. He Anytime he got fined, he would donate money to charities. Like, he was just over the top, but he was the right type of over the top for the NBA. He was the right type of over the top for any sport, right? Because he was such a passionate owner and he was fun. And I think newer owners have learned a lot from watching Mark Cuban's success. Yeah. And he's no longer, so the reason why I asked that question, he's no longer with Shark Tank, correct? Correct. So he's done with Shark Tank. Here he is with this transaction, obviously, which, by the way, for those that have no idea what we're talking about, originally buying the team for $285 million back in 2000, and she's buying the Mavericks from Mark Cuban for an estimated $3.5 billion, and he still gets to stay in full control of all basketball operations as he retains a minority share. Um, he did say the goal of the mission is to build the Mavs new stadium in the middle of a casino resort complex. Oh, it's all about sports gambling. That's where the sports gambling, wow. she's going, but she's going to take that money and then she's going to build a new basketball stadium. We saw it with FanDuel building like their, like I think now imagine if you could build a casino with a basketball now you got people that can go in there for a couple hours before the game, after the game. You can gamble. You can do all that. And three and a half billion, that's not the value of the of the Mavericks. The Mavericks valuation right. is probably five billion, five and something yeah. billion dollars. So it's like, you know, he's still got he's keeping equity that's going to continue to grow as she builds this into a casino, multiplex, whatever. Now, are you how are the rules going to go? I don't know, but. Right. Which, how about this? Interesting enough, Texas doesn't have commercial casinos and hasn't legalized sports betting and instead has just two Native American owned casinos across the entire state. Um, so how about that for the information when it comes to your science board, Channing, and being a part of? Well, I'll say this for him. He's still still in control. And think about how good the, the Mavericks are right now. How about Jason Kidd's quote? Love it. And I've never heard him cuss like that. Richard. I have. I and have. he was so straight faced too. Well, um, you know, look, point, when J Kid when J Kid gets matter of fact, like you would prefer an emotional J Kid when he gets matter of fact like that. It, it, that's more scary because that's really more his personality. Like in a locker room, if shit was going on, he's like, "Well, you know, I just wish motherfuckers gave a damn around here. That's all." <laughs> and you're like, "Oh shit." Uh, ruh, 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 ruh. But you agreed with him, Channing? Oh, yeah, I agree with him. For sure, Rich, both of you? you yeah. know what? And and we fall into it, too, but I think we're a little more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. They can't wait to shit on some of these players. And these players are like, and this is me. I thought the Dallas Mavericks would be ho-hum this year. These dudes are balling. These dudes are balling. They were like, is Kyrie and, and Luka going to work? Oh, you, you see it's working. Well, Jason Kidd, is he really that good of a coach? And they don't have this and they don't have that. It's like at some point when somebody does well, why don't we write a story going, holy crap, this team is doing well. Here's what they're doing well. Like it's it's so hard. People like literally cannot just say, you know what? I was wrong. These boys is balling. Yeah. Like that's all it takes is to go, hey, man, Kyrie and Luca, they worked it out. Mm -hmm. Like they're playing great. They're role players playing great. Their system, it works. Luca's in shape. Kyrie is playing every game that he can. Their rookie center is transformative and doesn't get any credit. Defensively, they're attentive. Like there are certain things that certain teams are doing where it's like writers and other people are just so bored. They'd rather write about the shitty Clippers getting beat or how Joel Embiid is getting to the free throw line than like, Dude, some of these teams like Sacramento who are playing their ass off and playing good team basketball. This is the epitome of don't just read the headline. You have to go listen to the video because when you read the headline, it says, Jason Kidd, I'm giving you a fucking answer. It's all right to write positive stuff. People will read your positive shit. And it's like, but if you listen to it, it's just like, I'm giving you a fucking answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I said like that. And that's why like text and tone and all that stuff isn't always and it's still clickbait it's still clickbait so even for jason kidd in that moment what he's trying to say is going to turn into clickbait but he said in the most calm way he's like well yeah. i just asked you a question well i'm just giving you a fucking answer like i'm not i don't know what you want but it's like the headline in bold it looks like jay kidd was cussing out someone what i understand the most about who who do you think has kyrie or luca which one how, how have they figured it out? 
I think it was a short sample size last year. Then they were both hurt. They like got traded. The team was still kind of ah, right. Yeah. Like look at like look at what happened with Phoenix. Right. They're like just because you get traded midseason and then they realize that they wanted to tank. And if they didn't tank, they wouldn't have gotten lively, who is going to be their center for the next decade if they wouldn't have tanked. So it was like they made a decision to shut them down, not to have them fight through the end of the season. Maybe they would have been that seven, eight seed if they would have pushed through. And maybe they would have made a run because they had more time to put it together. They were like, man, let's keep our pick. Let's wrap this up and bring it back together. So everybody trash because it's popular to trash Kyrie. Everyone track Luca and can he win? These dudes show up and they're fucking doing what they're supposed to and playing at a high level. Now you better start quickly rewriting some of these narratives that you had penciled in. How yeah. long is Jason Kidd gonna last? Is Jason Kidd on the bubble? Is blah blah blah? And it's like, is Luca I, gonna leave? Yeah, that that no. was what they were. That was what they were preparing for this narrative to be at the minute that. It didn't if they were playing just barely 500 basketball right now. Dude, you gotta give credit. I give credit to Kyrie going. This is your team, Luca. But uh, if when you need me, right, you may be Superman, but I'm Batman. Like I got my own utility belt. Like you may be able to fly, but I got a plane. And Kyrie the on the thing. yeah, Kyrie on the court is one of the best Batman or one of the best. Yeah, yeah, Superman and Batman. There's not Superman one or two. It's whatever, not whatever you like. Yeah, yeah. There, he is one of the best Batmans, and I'm not even talking about what his time just with Karat, with uh, with LeBron. What he did in Denver. Oh uh, God, what he did in Brooklyn. What he did in Brooklyn. What he did in Brooklyn with KD. I, what he did in Brooklyn with KD and James Harden and moving to the two. And, you know, when he gets in those spots and you say, be specific, you're an attacker, you're a scorer, that's your job. Luca or LeBron or whoever will distribute or James Harden. He is one of the best to fill those roles. So, like, we're not surprised. I, I think Luca's impressed me the most. Luca and Lively have impressed me the most. Hmm. Unexpected from a rookie and Luca showing that, hey, I can play with another 25 point a game scorer. Yeah. Who's no, not great defensively. Are... Who's not great defensively, by the way. So the yeah. fact that, that both of them who are, let's I'll call them average defensively, right? I'll Medium call them average. below average. Yeah, Luca's below average. I would say Kyrie's average. When yeah, focused, Kyrie's I, average, Luca's medium rare average. Okay, okay. So that's what I'm saying. So the considering that those are two of your starters, even yeah. defensively, those guys have been putting forth effort and they've been playing. Like, it's, you know, you can get it done. Yeah. yeah. The Dallas Mavericks are fourth in the West right now at 11 and six. Hey, road trippers. The hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast and Rich Channing have made their sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the Sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats and you could win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the Sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. Something that happened shortly after we recorded last week, but I, I would love your guys' take on it. And obviously, Rich, you were on the game. Um, the saga that continued between Chris Paul and referee Scott Foster, just kind of some of the facts. Chris Paul's teams have a 3-17 and record in the playoffs when Foster's on the game. That record is 73-56 and without Foster refing um obviously chris paul was ejected by scott after an exchange of words cp3 says the exchange involved his son and the video of the incident supports that having said that what is your take what should happen can go first before i obliterate this thing not me well, by the way <laughs> I, you know i'm not on a court with either one of them but i i think it's a two bulls that just go like this every single time i don't think Scott Foster is completely wrong or completely right. And I don't think Chris Paul, I just think two grown men hate each other's guts. And I think it's just a thing. It happens. There are players that hate each other's guts. I'm pretty sure not all the referees like each other. I don't give a shit. Personally, I don't give a shit. I think this is great for TV because I know that as soon as Scott Foster makes a call from 
left field. Here comes Chris Paul. And I will say this, for as nice as Chris Paul seems in all these insurance commercials, he is in my 14 years of playing basketball, talks more reckless to referees than any other player. This is Allen Iverson. This is Braun. This is Shaq. This is Kobe. This is whoever else, even Rasheed Wallace. Chris Paul talks crazy to refs. Now, does he deserve some respect? Absolutely. But if you talk crazy, people are going to talk crazy back. I don't know if that's what happened in this instance, but the track record shows my man will hit you with, you know, d- dictation 4.2 in the referee <laughs> handbook. You need to be there. Why aren't you fucking doing your job? You're a bum. Get the fuck out of here on your Spirit Isle Airlines plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, God damn, that's not a T. Spirit Airlines do to you? I, nothing, nothing. My bad spirit. My bad spirit. <laughs> Um, all right. Who are your sleeper picks of the week? Each of you are going to give the audience a player you think is primed to go off this week and score more than their sleeper app projections. Who do you got? Paolo Bencaro. Ooh. God, shout out Jamal Mosley. My goodness. Mose. He balling. We knew it. Orlando they just need Magic. to be healthy. He getting an extension really like yet? He getting an extension shot? shot? I, yeah, I said they need a shooter. But they are scrappy. Jalen Suggs has really embraced. I thought he could do it for a month. Now he's done it too. Dude, their team just buys into what they're doing. Yeah. Be Paolo first- Bancaro is your pick? Yeah, he's been averaging like 23, 24. I think he goes off for a couple 30 pieces this week. Hmm, nice. Ooh, it's a tough they one. Got Cleveland coming up. I did just see that that's who they have now that they're not in the in season. I'm going to say Max. I, no, no, no. I, I want to say Max Drews because he had a game, but I'm going to go with Evan Mobley. I think Evan Mobley, you know, and look, he's got numbers, but I think, I, I'm, I think he's going to, I think he's going to have a good week. Yeah. They've been barely, or barely, very, very quiet this year. They have. They've been, they were banged up to start the season. They didn't, they weren't, you know, they've had some tough losses, some good wins. It was, you know, it's interesting. It, yeah. Uh, Road Trip and Sleeper Picks of the Week are sponsored by Sleeper Fantasy. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code ROADTRIPIN for a deposit match for up to $100. Terms and conditions apply. Um, speaking of Cleveland, let's go to the Lakers. Um, tough loss. Wow. 40 point loss. Tough um, loss. To the Sixers following what was arguably probably their best win on the road this season in Cleveland two days prior. Um, LBJ, how about this freaking fact? On the same night that LeBron obviously becomes the leader in minutes played over 66,000. Um, he is handed or <laughs> he has the worst loss of his career, 44 points. There is this stat out there that Michael Jordan's worst NBA loss, 44 points came at the age of 38 and 333 days. LeBron's worst loss of his career came at age 38, 44 point loss. Now it says 333 days too. We did some fact checking and it's just two days off because I don't think they count leap years. However, how wild. What, oh, what is oh. this? No, wait, this? wait, 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 wait. Who did they lose to? Who, who did Jordan and them lose to? Was it Philly? I don't know why you're right. So it was the Nets. Oh, was it? You is Richard? that when you 50? <laughs> No, that's why he gave us 50 afterwards, because we gave <laughs> the worst loss ever. He stretched and showed that up. That is wild to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, well, okay, oh, anyway. Oh, wait, wait. That's wild. But when we talk about him being him possibly being conceived nine months before, you know what I'm saying? Like, with the- Because that's with, like sexual. What? Like, what? No. It's not, we're not no. making it sexual. We're saying- No, we're no, no, not making it sexual. sexual. My point is, is you know how hard that is, bro? Like Loss. Either way, whatever it is, it's within it's within a month. It's within a month of Kareem breaking the record. Say whatever you want. Braun was born nine months later. So say, like, I, <laughs> say whatever you want. I like, it's just math. It's just math. He was born in December. Nine months, maybe 10 months prior, something happened, right? Like- that's what I'm saying. And anyway. Kareem broke the record. Nine months later, Brown was born. That shit's trippy to me. Sorry. I'll forever think. I'll forever think. Like, I'll forever think that's great. That's crazier than being Mama James, I'm not going to let him continue to talk about you. Put your tinfoil hat on, people. <laughs> I, not, I, there's not a conspiracy. This is not a conspiracy. This is not that's a conspiracy. It. How is it a conspiracy? They Kareem know. broke the record. 
facts. These are facts. Kareem broke the record on a date. Nine to ten months later, LeBron James was born. That would imply that, that she... would imply that within the three week span of that, that's just facts, man. I'm not She's trying a to big get fan into of. There's only sport. one day that you actually. I, I don't agree, need to get into this whole. Month. Month. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it was the day. Hey, I got four I'm kids. Saying know within that, that month. In that month. That's all. <laughs> Channing, do you know how that works? Um, yeah. Okay, so anyways, when it comes to the Lakers, did you know this? I didn't even realize and I was doing post game. Talk about me and my intelligence. Uh, it was just the fourth time in LeBron's 21 year career that he failed to register a rebound. Zero rebounds. Lazy LeBron. ass. Um, all right, so for the Lakers right now, three point shooting has not been Trash. great um, for them. Opponents have made more than them in 14 of the 18 games. Um, they're six and eight in those games. What are you kind of like as you're processing this? One, I, I assume you guys look at it in terms of it, it's one loss. You move on. They're 10 and eight. They were 10 and seven coming in, coming off a great win. They've dealt with all these injuries. It is not an excuse. It's reality. You guys know this. Um, but having said that, how are you kind of the three point shooting is not great. The battle on the boards is not great when it comes to defensive rebounding. And then obviously the slow starts, that's kind of been the pattern for them. Um, but is that loss just, I mean, they, they take on the Detroit Pistons tonight as we're that's this, a loss you losing. don't want. Yeah, oh, that's different, gosh, right? Yeah. In a sense, yeah, who gives a shit? You lose by a hundred to Philly, just win by one against the. The Detroit. only thing I will say in the Philly game, because I was obviously doing this, Patrick Beverly, Marcus Moore Senior had only hit six threes combined coming in. Patrick Beverly shooting thirteen point six percent from three had only hit three threes all season long. They put up eight, so it's like one of those like it's one of those games. threes. Yeah, Y'all stink okay. on defense. Your yeah, that's not true. Actually, in the month of November, oh, they're fourth oh, in defensive okay. rating. So. Oh, it Chill <laughs> against against a, a solid team. Dude. The only thing is, is that they really haven't had that many great wins above five hundred teams or five and eight. So it's Beat like the team you're supposed to beat the teams you're supposed to. Beat the team. more wins for y'all. I like when you guys make the Laker conversation very easy. No, I'm saying beat the teams you're supposed. No, I'm with like you. You toss that away. Like I look. Yeah. That was just a shitty game. You wish you there was more. They shot the piss out of it. There's nothing you can do. Though there'll be five or six games every single year where you're gonna play and just everything you your guys throw up, they hit, and vice versa. Yeah. What do you think of the great Popovich? Getting oh, on the mic. I honestly stop booing. We are classier than that. Dude, I, I really thought, regardless of what it was. He feels a certain way about Kawhi. I feel like he really must have a good relationship with Kawhi and be like, stop bothering my boy like that. <laughs> like, that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like to me watching it. And I was actually watching the game and I was like, oh, look at that. <laughs> like, you, you're, you're like, come on, Pop. You're like, hey, Dad, like, he's fine. He has social anxiety anyway, so it's not like he's going to see any of these people. Even he said it. He goes, when I see them out, they don't boo me. So he goes, it's okay. Oh, that's actually cute. Yeah. And so for me, I'm just like, it happens. They're like, Russ doesn't want to get talked to. Kawhi doesn't care. Pop doesn't want to get booed. It's just, you know, it's a lot of love going around. It's a lot of love. Hey, hey I got to shout out our guy, Stephen A. Stephen A., like sometimes when people go on these rants, like Pop, Pop went on that. I don't got much to say about about that. But Stephen A. Because Clay Thompson, you know, Clay Thompson did one of his rants. Clay Thompson is one of my favorite rants. But when he evolved. He got, well, because he, when he got off to a slow start a couple years ago, this is what he said. They're like, "Have you, you know, taught me?" He's like, "Well, who's going to give me any advice? Who's going to give me advice? Larry Bird, Reggie Miller." <laughs> <laughs> Who am I gonna call Ray Allen? Maybe Steve. Maybe Steve can give me some advice. But he was really saying there's only four or five people in the history of this planet that can do what I do at the level that I can do. Who am I gonna call for advice? Right. And so he was like, I don't really care what those people think. And Stephen A hits hit you hit us with one of these. Well, maybe you should start caring. Maybe you should start. Maybe you should. You've, you've been you've been you horrendous, and you've been and you're just like, come on, bro, come on. <laughs> Come on, that's not the way the mentality works of an athlete. That's not the way that mentality. If you're worried about what people are saying, then you're not worried about what's in front of you. That's just the way the mentality works. So, like, yes, he does care. He's saying he doesn't care what people think and what people should say. He was like, wait, should because the question was, are you happy that Steve Kerr is giving you patience? Are his patience? And he was like, Man, I'm I'm part of the reason why Steve Kerr's got four championships. Damn right. 
I'm part of the reason why Steve Kerr gets paid what he gets paid. Like, mm-hmm. I like game six, Clay, game six, Clay. And you want to talk about patience with me? Like I averaged 20 this year. It's 15 games in. I'm you know, off to a slow start. Draymond's been suspended for five games. I'll be fine. That's our mentality. That's our mentality. I just don't like it when people went, well, you should care. He should not care. He should not care at all what I say, what, what, what Channing says, what Stephen A. says, what a reporter says. He should care about what his teammates say. He should care about what his coach says and his work ethic. Those are, those are the only three things. I will die on that hill that he should not give a damn. I tell players when I say, hey, don't ever pay attention to anything I say. Just keep it pushing. These are my opinions. My opinions don't win or lose games. So it's just like I just had to say that because I just found that funny that 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 Stephen A is is, is giving our guy. And it, I understand what he is. I understand what Stephen A is trying to say. But a peek into the athlete's mentality, they will never care. We will never care. And the minute you start caring what people think, then you're your fucked. games change it. You're fucked. Proper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was worried about him at the beginning just because I didn't. It was like I felt like he wasn't as. Um, energetic or I felt like he was caring at the beginning and then something happened. He had that one game where he had 20 and I'm, I'm very much attentive to clay stats. Cause he's on my, he's on my fantasy, fantasy team. team. Yeah. You can be honest. Right. He's on my fantasy team, but I also like clay and I've wanted him on my fantasy team for a couple of years. Cause he's consistent. Even when he's dipping, it's like, Oh, that dip is going to be too dippy. Right. It's just going to be a little guy. But um, dude, I, it's, it's good to watch him be aggressive. At the beginning of the year, I was like, dude, is he overthinking his contract? Is he yes. Wiggins bad play this? And finally, he just said, fuck it, and went back to Captain Clay and Ben Hoopman, even though they lost last night, which was wild. Yeah, I, I just think, like, the question was, it was the question that was posed to Clay was, like, should you, like, you know, talk about Steve Kerr's patience with you? Yeah, I would be fucking furious at that question if I was Clay. Think about that. Right, like, yeah, like, do top five go- best shooter of all time? Patience, he's nuts. Yes. Oh, I, I'm a hundred percent. It's like, yo, one of the best two way players of this generation. Like, Clay is one of the most special players in NBA history. We're talking about a guy who legitimately was upset he wasn't one of the seventy five greatest, mm-hmm. legitimately. And there are people that like had arguments for him, and he got votes. If you're one of the 75 greatest players to ever pick up a basketball, if you're one of the top five shooters to ever play, and you're off to a slow start, 15, it's not like your team is two and 12, right? It's not like Wiggins is playing great. It's not like Draymond has been there. So my thing is like, if there's a struggle, that's the team. And there's a struggle that's you individually a little bit. And it's a contract year. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Listen. You guys are on a roll. Your opinions are great. We're going to wrap up this edition of Road Trip, and we've got plenty more on the other side.